the sound designer really comes up with the sounds for all the, the animals and the whole natural environment that makes up the world of the film. The ones where you sort of hear, you actually hear the human quality of the scream are good. Part of our sort of philosophy behind the sounds in this film was to have the sound effects really be as naturalistic as possible. And part of that involves recording sounds in, you know, outdoor natural spaces as opposed to in a studio. And that's been a little difficult in Wellington because it's a small, compact place and it's noisy. So it's tough to find outdoor spaces where you don't have airplanes and cars and people and all that. So there's actually a cemetery just outside of Wellington where we've been going to do a lot of recording. And we have to go there at night because during the daytime you have cicadas and they don't quiet down until the sun goes down. So we've been doing a lot of sort of recording of swords and um, bow and arrow and screaming in the cemetery. And we've had to um, repeatedly like phone up the police in the area and say, we want to do some recording there tonight. So can you warn all the neighbors that if they hear screaming coming from the cemetery, it's just us. The dead marshes are an environment that lend themselves to incorporating a lot of different vocal elements because it's really this place where all the ghosts of the elves and the other people have fought in these battles from the past, their souls are sort of trapped in the marshes. And so what we've done in terms of the design is all the sounds that we hear are vocal based. Again, it's these sort of like mud bubbles percolating up that are whispering. So we can have sort of vocal whispers and things that are turned into bubbles, turned into wind, turned into you know, different sort of mud, slurpy, sloshy elements. And then at certain points, as Frodo starts to be put into this trance, he's hearing the voices of these souls trapped in the dead marshes. The whole environment is infused with these voices. And at certain points, they come more to the forefront and really start to suck you in. The general sort of philosophy with battles is that we really want to sort of focus on what's happening right in front of our faces in the foreground, but we want to feel sort of the mass, the crowds with these huge sort of epic scale battles. And so it's this constant balance between how do you get the size and power without having too many sounds starting to cancel each other out. So it's about finding the right details to bring out front that really have the most impact and letting everything else fade a little bit into the background. For us as sound people, you know, we can feel really good about our work when it's not really noticed, when it is seamless. And it functions in a way where it supports the, the emotional content of a scene without drawing attention to itself. How many? 10,000 strong. Let them come.